This channel shifts around a lot. Sometimes it's shooters, sometimes it's survival horror, fighting games, beat-em-ups. And right now we're in a bit of a shooter phase. Deadlink, Turbo Overkill, and now I want to talk about a little game called Herald of Havoc. I'm betting you haven't heard of it. At the time of recording this, it has less than 50 reviews on Steam. A very positive rating, but yeah, no one knows about this game. I'm here to tell you that they should know about it. It's pretty fun. I initially wrote it off as just another one of those one-man-made, cheap generic shooters, but Herald of Havoc is a lesson in not judging a game too quickly. I don't think you can blame me though, the simplistic geometry of the opening level, the basic AI that just runs at you, it gives off that feeling. Plus, the menu is incredibly simple, it's lacking standard options like resolution settings, borderless windowed mode. To be honest, I was worried. And you guys know me at this point, right away I was going to see how easy it is to just play dumb. Because while a retro shooter like this has a fun zone that's already burned into my genes, that doesn't mean it gets a free pass when it comes to the challenge matters philosophy. That's when Herald of Havoc started to impress me very quickly. There are three difficulty settings, and you're really going to have to know what you're looking for here. Personally, after feeling out the first levels on the middle difficulty, I decided to restart on what the game refers to as the unfair difficulty, promising a brutal experience. I don't always go for the most extreme option, but in this case I found it necessary, because it makes 95% of the game far more satisfying. However, it also makes certain areas absurdly difficult, to the point where you might just turn the game off. By the second and third level, I was feeling the kind of pressure I was looking for. You know what I mean, playing smart, using a variety of tools, out of a sense of survival. When you start, you have a mid-range sword attack, which is pretty effective, and you get a pistol that was initially worrying. It has infinite ammo, an infinite ammo laser pistol. Uh, uh. I got to testing this thing right away, trying to see if the game let me get away with playing dumb, and I was so happy to see that I was utterly failing. Herald of Havoc puts you in plenty of situations right away where you just die if you screw around too much trying to spam pistol. I quickly started depending on the machine gun, the shotgun, the super shotgun, and later weapons like the flamethrower and the shock rifle. Due to ammo limitations, and the sheer number of enemies on screen, it becomes impossible to just cheese one weapon. You don't get resources back from combat, so you're spending it all. Which makes pistol integration nice, because you can use it to pick off easy to kill enemies to save ammo. An argument could be made that the pistol should be more useful, as I tended to forget about it unless I was consciously trying to save ammo, but I'll take that over it being too good and trivializing combat. The weapon variety, each weapon having an alternate fire, leads to a lot of quick decision making and using the right tool for the moment. A lot of alternate fire modes consume your explosive ammo, which is used for the flamethrower, the flame cannon, and the explosive fire modes of the machine gun and the super shotgun. And then the shock rifle uses electric rounds for both fire modes, the alt fire being the most devastating attack I've seen in a long time, one I never got tired of whipping out for emergencies. The Soul Reaper is something that takes some getting used to, a melee that turns killed enemies into drones that fight for you until they die. You can also shock a dead enemy with the alt fire using electric rounds and resurrect them. Very useful for distracting the AI in overwhelming combat encounters. It really is the weapons that make this game come alive, and you're gonna need to dominate your arsenal if you're gonna make it past the vicious AI that gets introduced later on. Mid to high tier enemies are quite tanky. You're not taking them down with a single up close super shotgun blast, oh no. The bull enemies have a very deadly ramming charge that can be hard to avoid and they have a lot of health. Projectile shooting enemies start bouncing around in weird patterns becoming hard to focus on. And these guys, my god, huge assholes right here. They charge up a shotgun blast that you can see and hear coming and you have about a second to find cover, or you're getting blasted for a lot of damage. You can actually use these guys strategically to make them shoot other enemies, but it can be challenging to do so because of how dangerous it can be to stand still just for one moment. A lot of times I felt like I was put into unfair situations where I had to choose between getting meleeed to death or stepping out into the open to eat a shotgun blast to the face. 
And that word fair, that's where things start to get a bit uneven in the Herald of Havoc experience. I feel like the highest difficulty is the only way to really have a satisfying experience room to room, but unfortunately it also means you're going to walk into a fight every once in a while where it feels like you're just banging your head against the wall. So much is thrown at you, it's too much. And I know that this difficulty says it's for people who have mastered the game, yes I agree with that, but the problem is that the lower difficulties don't really offer a fun enough challenge to truly appreciate what the game offers, so I either have to pick a generally tame experience, or one that occasionally bends me over so hard that I regret my decision. I stuck with it, I forced my way through these somewhat bullshit encounters that I was clearly not ready for, because I was happy enough with what the rest of the game offered and I could put up with a few periods of frustration and rage. Every level starts with sword only, and you find weapons along the way, allowing the creator to craft each level's combat experience around the weapons you find. This time you don't have a shotgun, this time there's no shock rifle. It was a nice way to add a bit of variation and unpredictability to the combat flow, and it made it impossible to approach every level the same way. However, since there is no way to carry weapons into the next level, and there's no sort of progression system like permanent increases to health and whatnot, I feel the secret hunting does end up getting harmed. There are old school exploration secrets, which are definitely fun to find, but since you're really just gonna find a weapon that you can only use for this level, eventually I stopped caring about secrets altogether. Though I don't want to suggest that secrets are useless, they certainly aren't. You can find power-ups, health, more ammo, etc. It's all useful. They just lost their appeal to me. That's about all I have to say about the gameplay. It's pretty fun. Not the most amazing of the year, I'm not saying this is the next Dead Link, but for a small project like this, a guy's first game, it's impressive and feels surprisingly good to play. Like we see in many indie titles like this, the gameplay and level design significantly improve as the chapters progress. I mention this all the time when reviewing early access shooters. Act 1 is when the dev is figuring stuff out, and Act 2 is when they start to stretch their legs and get more ambitious. Act 2 starts introducing more interesting visuals and engaging map layouts, and it stays strong for most of the game. There's a couple puzzle-like situations involving traps, some gigantic arena fights with an absurd amount of enemies and infinite ammo, and there's a final boss who… Uh, I'm not gonna get into it here, I don't want to spoil too much, but I think it could have been better. So yeah, Herald of Havoc is a recommendation to those of you who enjoy these throwback shooter experiences. I'd say if you liked Proteus or Dusk or Old School Doom and Quake, this game is worth your time. Buy it, leave a review, and tell them Mayo sent ya. Bye.